we have almost 250 people in the room already so yeah they're gonna just keep coming on you feel free yeah. to do it all right all right. Good afternoon, folks. How's everybody doing today? My name is Daniela Labate Cavelli. I'm the Director of Managed Care Initiatives here at NIAPERS, and I'm also going to be your host this afternoon with Larry Hochwald for Laughter is the Best Medicine, Healing Through Humor. So hopefully everybody's in a good mood today, and if not, you'll be in a better mood afterwards. That's uh, it's quite a promise, Larry. I hope you can live up to that. <laughs> I'm sure that I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just a little bit about NIAPERS. NIAPERS is a change agent and we're dedicated to improving services, public policies, and social conditions for folks with mental health, substance use, and trauma-related challenges. And we do that by promoting health, um, wellness, and recovery with full community inclusion so that everyone can achieve maximum potential in the communities of their choice. And we do that through advocacy, education, demonstration, and innovation. Um, so just real quick, a couple of quick housekeeping things before I turn it over to Larry, who's going to captivate your attention for the hour. Um, we are offering CEs for today's event, um, CEs for social work, CPRP and LMHC. So if you uh, do require one of those social work um, LMHC or CPRP hours, um, you're going to receive an evaluation. Everyone will receive an evaluation to the email address that you registered with. We ask that you return that evaluation within 48 hours in order to be eligible to receive your continuing education credit. And uh, we also ask that you be in the virtual room and not just calling in on the phone. Um, and that I think will do it for me. I will be holding on to questions. Um, so feel free to chat in the chat box and chat to all panelists. I'm gonna be keeping track of questions and we've got a few minutes set aside at the end for Q&A. So please feel free to chat in. And with that, I think I'm gonna turn it over to Larry. Thank you very much, Daniela. So I am Larry Hockwell. Before we get started, I would just like to point out that in the description for this webinar, uh, they promised you some belly laughs. I would just like to point out that was marketing hyperbole, uh, that uh, we at NIAPRS take these things very seriously, and I, as one of their trainers, feel sometimes it's my job to take fun out of training because it can be distracting. So uh, buckle up, sit back, and, and get ready to learn. So um, let's go. So I am Larry Hockwald. That's a, I know what you're thinking. That is, in fact, a picture from when I was much younger. Uh, nevertheless, since we used it, I do have to point out that um, and in order to satisfy my consent to, to create with PETA, I'm required to apologize to all animals who may be subject to ridicule during any of these trainings. I also can't use cat memes anymore because I left the one where the kitten was hanging up, you know, it said hang in there. I left it up way too long during a de-escalation training and they felt that was cruel and unusual as well. So my apologies to Mr. Banjo and in fact, all orangutans everywhere. So this is uh, more about me. Uh, so I am a CPRP. I've worked for NIAPRS for uh, over six years and that's a little bit uh, more about me. Okay. So what are we gonna be doing today? We're gonna to discuss what humor is and its benefits. We will look at integrating humor in a helping relationship, identifying when to use it, when, when not to necessarily use it. And then we'll review some humor strategies and exercises. We can incorporate humor as we will see without being funny ourselves. We can incorporate uh, humor in many different ways and we can learn to be a little bit more funny so we'll see what we can do about that what do we mean by humor if you've ever thought about it it's that quality which appeals to the sense of ludicrous or absurd it's incongruous you may have noticed people who are funny say things that you may not expect or that nobody would have thought was appropriate in, in that particular instance when i first did this training at our annual conference i gave some examples and i was told not to do that anymore um humor is the mental faculty of discovering expressing or appreciating the ludicrous or the absurdly incongruous and humor is something that is or designed to be comical or amusing 
the benefits of humor on our mental health. Studies have been done. We got, we have the citations. Uh, we'll have it posted, the presentation posted. You'll be able to check it out on our website after, uh, sometime after this webinar. Humor reduces stress, depression, anxiety, and fear. It increases energy. It can help us perform activities that we might otherwise avoid. Laughter like a smile is the shortest distance between two people. It makes people feel closer to each other. So a healthy sense of humor is related to being able to laugh at oneself in a way of accepting oneself, which can be very important uh, when life doesn't always hand us uh, everything we want out of it. When people laugh together, they can feel bonded. It's a mood elevator. So there's a lot of uh, benefits to, to humor. Uh, how do, uh, why would we use it in our work? Well, in the therapeutic relationship, it can enhance the alliance, increase trust. Uh, it can help uh, clients thought processes by helping them to get unstuck. Sometimes that um, non sequitur, that incongruity, that, that absurd statement helps to get people thinking in a different way, might get them e or unstuck from a, a train of thought that, that isn't getting them where they want to get. Uh, it helps clients cope with difficult situations. Um, we'll talk more about that because it's also, we're going to talk about how practitioners and other healthcare professionals are using these kinds of things during the COVID crisis or for, you know, the COVID crisis, as you well know, for many of us didn't start the crises we deal with at work. Uh, ER staff, uh, inpatient staff, a lot of people have been dealing with stress and, and crises uh, routinely, and they've been using humor in different ways, and we'll look at some of those. It can help clients accept themselves, and we'll talk about some ways to use it to help people and to bond with people, and it can shift perspective. It can make you see things in a different way. That laugh might be the bridge to, hey, you know, that's also a different way to think about it. Um, in dialectical behavioral therapy, Marsha Linehan has found the use of humor and irreverence she calls it a reverence, actually, can help by distracting and breaking out of a train of thought because it's unexpected. And an example given at the website is client says, I'm going to kill myself. And the therapist says, I thought we agreed you were not going to quit therapy. Uh, in the use of humor and serious mental illness, a review, and we have the citation there, they bring up plenty of studies, and we'll look at a few of them, where it's been used to reduce psychiatric symptoms in some cases, certainly to reduce levels of anxiety, depression, uh, to reduce verbal hostility and aggression and anger. Um, integrating humor into practice, there's a few ways. You know, it's a good icebreaker. It can put people at ease. It's good to use at a meeting. Some would say it's a better way to start a meeting than telling people they won't have any fun. Uh, you can model and playfully engage with clients to some degree by pointing out something about the situation that's unusual or amusing. Uh, it can provide a corrective emotional experience. As we talked about before, about getting unstuck, uh, it's a different way of looking at things. Sometimes taking a situation somebody doesn't find funny at all and then turning it into showing why it could be looked at humorously. We have a lot of that in our personal lives, right, where uh, we find something funny someone else doesn't find funny. We'll talk about that as well, when not to use it or at least when to gauge how it's going. Fortunately, at a webinar, I can't gauge how it's going. I see no faces, I hear no laughs. So I just tell myself how wonderful everything is going. Uh, it helps, uh, you need to be uh, aware of the person's presentation. We'll look at this a little more, but are they open to it? Are they finding it appropriate? But we will examine that a bit deeper. And it can increase connection to our own innate playfulness. It, humor works with practice. The more you try, the more you do it, even if you're not that funny, the more you try, the more connections you'll make. Then your brain will say, hey, I'm making, that was funny, let's store that away, I gotta go in that direction, that was not funny, I'm not going in that direction again. And we process things on a conscious and unconscious level. So uh, humor, as well as pets, can actually affect our brain chemistry. So let's see what uh, this man has to say. Hi everybody, it's Paul. You know, a lot of people ask me, uh, after a long day of voiceover or writing or doing all those creative things that I do, um, how do I relax? Well, like many other Americans, uh, I come home and I, I pet my dog. You see, petting the dog 
is one of the most relaxing things you can possibly do. It releases a hormone called oxytocin, which reduces stress. Also, it lowers your heart rate and it lowers your blood pressure. Plus, people who pet their dogs are five times more likely to live longer than people who just have cats. Plus, the dogs like it so much, and it's a nice bonding experience. That's right. Good daddy, little boy. Daddy, little boy. Daddy, little boy. That's right. So, uh, by the way, he was making that up about cats. Uh, cats work just as well. Uh, some of us think cats work better. Uh, so, and I will encourage everybody while you're doing the chat, and I, I haven't really been able to monitor it, on the, though, though I am taking a look now, you feel free to share things because everyone can see the chat. And often with the presentation, we will post uh, the chat if, if there's some helpful stuff in there. So feel free to post things you do, uh, things you've tried, uh, if something didn't work for you, but we'll talk about how to get away around some of that stuff that didn't work for you. But um, laughter has been shown to confer medical benefits. And, and you'll see why it's a natural to see that it confers both mental health and medical benefits. Because uh, for the past 40 years, studies have shown that good hearty laughter relieves tension, relieves stress. Now that's emotional, but we know that when you cut down on stress, enough studies have been done that shows that can boost the immune system. It reduces stress hormones. It increases uh, activity among immune cells and antibodies. It helps reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. Uh, it's been found to improve the blood flow and blood vessel functioning. Uh, laughter and humor can be a tonic for the brain as well, triggering the brain's emotional reward centers, spurs the release of dopamine, helping the brain to process emotional responses, enhancing experience of pleasure, more serotonin, buoys our mood, endorphins to regulate our pain and stress to induce euphoria. It, it has been shown to do a great many positive things. And that's why it's become such a key part of our culture from the sitcom to the, to the rom-com movies to just, you can watch just about any movie uh, uh, and uh, Marvel superhero movies, lots of humor there. They throw humor wherever they can. It was inevitable that somebody should do a training about it. So, um, there's all kinds of research out there. Um, and uh, so proposed links between use, use, humor and positive well-being, we find them intuitive, right? We think, of course, but it's good when somebody has done the research, has backed it up so that we can then, after the fact, because I know some of you are thinking, I've been using humor for years. I don't even remember why I signed into this training. Oh yeah, that's right, I wanted to have proof that it works. So here you go. There's all these studies engaging in humor exercises associated with a positive mood. Uh, a sense of humor associated with increased life satisfaction and a, a pleasurable and engaged life. Humor has been reported among the top eight of 24 character strengths associated with increased life satisfaction, life engagement, and life pleasure, which I know means you're asking what are the other 23 you'll have to go visit. Go visit that for yourself. And adaptive humor is linked with increased stable positive mood and decreased stable negative mood. And we're going to talk, as I said, more about that. We really want you to see the way humor interplays with the, um, the work you may be doing, interplays with how you're doing with your work. You know, we, we've incorporated also into the, uh, we did some of that when we did our self care webinar back in May, much earlier in the COVID crisis, it's incorporated in our counteracting burnout tradings that are you know, available to, to people, uh, agencies. So uh, we've been incorporating it. The studies have been there for years. We know that it's uh, very helpful uh, for people for, for dealing with crises, for dealing with stress. Uh, but we want people to also start to think more about incorporating it into the work that, that they're doing. Um, an important caveat to what we just discussed is that the type of humor uh, that somebody exhibits can also play a key role in determining its impact. The, uh, this idea is evident in this study that showed positive outcomes were associated with self-enhancing humor. So I just want to point out, 
you, a lot of us are um, your professionals. You may have been research, done some research. They're not absolutes, right? They're correlations. They're, they're um, uh, what happens is you might know some people who are doing real well with less self-enhancing humor, more self-deprecating humor. These are, these are exceptions that just prove the rule. The majority of the humor that's being done with people who, who, who were doing the best in certain ways were doing more like self-enhancing humor. They found that detrimental humor, sarcasm, self-disparaging humor is believed to have some negative ramifications such as reduced relationship quality, low self-esteem. Therefore, it's suggested that the absence of detrimental humor is equally important to the presence of pro-social humor. So again, you may know people who defy that. You may know people who balance it out pretty good, but maybe they seem a little bit in one direction more than the other. Um, th these, are, these are just the findings. It's, it's not an absolute. Uh, but these findings have been supported by other research, such as that by these guys who investigated the ability of humor to predict positive outcomes. The researchers found greater well-being was related to affiliative and self-enhancing humor. So when, when you may be encouraging it, or certainly we don't want to take, get, get in the same vein of somebody's self-deprecating humor. We might want to, if you're particularly good at it, or you see the opportunity, and we'll talk about integrating it in, if you see the opportunity, you may want to throw in some self-enhancing uh, humor to show them how it can be balanced out because some people have a combination right they've been funny and they've had some difficult circumstances in their life and that skews them in a certain direction it's never too late to become more funny as we'll see there are exercises and there are um, different thing uh, methods plus plus as you saw the first of a few uh, videos you can if you don't think you're funny or more likely other people don't think you're funny and they tell you you're not funny, uh, you can incorporate other people's humor into things, into groups, into uh, ways of handling treatment. It doesn't only have to come from you. Plus you can look up uh, fun jokes and, and uh, find them that are appropriate to the, to the situation. They don't have to be written by you. Um, there's a lot of research uh, in medical care, so separate from mental health, we're seeing medical care, medical personnel, we're seeing that this has applications during COVID. Um, hope may represent a powerful me mechanism through which humor brings relief to patients. As evidenced by research addressing the impact of humor on termini terminally ill patients, the results of that study indicated 85% of patients believe that humor helped them deal with the reality by empowering hope. Uh, the use of humor in medicine has been studied from the pers perspective of healthcare workers as well. Uh, among physicians who work with dying patients, humor has been reported as one of eight coping mechanisms used to handle the extreme stress involved. Similarly, other research suggested that gallows humor, is, uh, which is humor often of, of talking about the bad things and, and sort of reveling in the, the bad things, uh, is beneficial for emergency personnel by providing an outlet for painful emotions and enhancing support fewer, uh, via group cohesion. So that's an important as we, we go through um, the crisis, as we go through the COVID crisis, realizing that using humor is something to be um, a bonding experience, something to be uh, pushed rather than suppressed and, and uh, something to be encouraged. Uh, and, and this study showed nurses uh, use humor related to lower emotional exhaustion, exhaustion and depersonalization, increased personal accomplishment, as well as greater coping efficacy and emotional expressivity. So this study, which was done uh, around nurses who used it, and the previous work suggesting with, with um, uh, medical personnel, emergency medical personnel, uh, and people dealing with, with uh, terminally, terminally ill patients, this is all uh, important stuff to incorporate in our life. This is not just to say, okay, I have another tool to benefit the people that I serve. And that's always a wonderful thing. We need to have as many tools as we possibly can. But it's very important that we also have these tools to help ourselves. Because as we know, and, and we've talked about in, in, in that self-care training for any of you who were there, uh, we talked about 
uh, the fact that the, the vicarious traumatization uh, is, is a big burden in our job. Burnout is a big burden in our jobs. And we want to have things that are a release valve for ourselves, not just for the people that we serve. So I just want to take a quick look, um, okay, uh, just to see if anyone's sharing any uh, stuff. Okay, there's all kinds of going th things going on in the chat. So I'm not going to do that again. I can't uh, delve in, but Daniela will, uh, I know, let us know if questions came up. But again, everybody can see the chat. Please feel free to, to chime in with what you're doing, what you've done, what you uh, have, um, you know, tried your successes. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say anything's a failure, anything's worth a shot, but maybe our challenges, the things that didn't go as well as we may have hoped. So, uh, and, and I want to take a, a moment just because we've gone through a lot of stuff. Anyone who has any questions that, you know, rather than wait till the very end, uh, if there's anything here that brought up a, a, an immediate question, I don't want to get too far away from the point. So you feel free, if there's something you absolutely weren't clear on, point it out. Uh, I'll, I'll check in from time to time, but Daniela uh, hopefully will also be able to uh, chime in because uh, I don't want to get too far from a point, even though we'll try and save um, stuff for the end. And I will point out, somebody gave a very helpful wellness tool just now. Baby Yoda makes me laugh. He's cute. Uh, yes, he, he makes a lot of people laugh, and I'm sure he's making a lot of people happy uh being I, i'm sure there's a doll being sold at the holiday time so uh okay so applied humor can be effective when it's situational for example help someone see they're not alone in the feelings they're having and in this example overwork it doesn't have to be shared work People, yes, they may, they may know my field is full of burnout. My field is very stressful. Absolutely. But misery loves company. Ever heard that term? People need to know that they're not alone in the bad times, not just the good times. And so sometimes um, sharing a work burden that isn't directly related, but especially in a funny way, can help people realize, hey, this is universal. I'm not the only one having a problem at work. Well, this is easier. Yeah, we can handle this, okay? on a candy assembly line, you probably have had a similar experience where things are going okay, and as soon as work's going okay, they start piling more and more on you until it's not going so okay. And then you're trying to figure out, what do I do? Here comes somebody. So, uh, and that's why these experiences uh, can be so helpful, uh, even, even though uh, it may not be re directly uh, applicable to the job you do. Um, so, okay. So, Larry, it's Daniela. I'm just going to interrupt you real quick. We said um, we saw something in the chat box. Somebody said that they're a therapist and that uh, during the pandemic they've uh, adjusted to telehealth and they often sort of can or they can identify with Lucy in this situation with telehealth and adjusting to telehealth so I thought that was great and we should share that yes that thank you very much that's very important and um, uh, 
and you know, uh, telehealth brings with it its own opportunities. Uh, you know, for humor and things like you can be doing telehealth or, or a webinar, even when the world is snowed in. And this is a good uh, time to remind you we did it in self-care. Uh, let's not have unex unintended humor during our um, telehealth. Let's not stand up on camera if we shouldn't. And let's not um, have the sound on when we we leave the room and, and uh, do whatever we do. So let's keep keep those rules in mind, even though we're looking to be humorous at times, we don't wanna do anything that um, will end up on Facebook. So, okay. So there are additional health benefits of, of humor besides what we touched on, which was mostly about um, reducing stress reducing the stress hormones, um, and then some of the subsequent um, health benefits of just reducing stress. Uh, but they found that laughing and humor increase heart and respiratory rates. But after these initial changes, you move into a state of relaxation, very similar to what happens during exercise. And so another way to get some um, aerobic cardiovascular benefits. As we said, it lowers the levels of the stress hormone cortisol, Laughing more means lower heart attack risk. Uh, a study found that laughter therapy effectively delayed cardiovascular complications of type 2 diabetes. Who, who wouldn't want to, to delay those? And watching a humorous movie led to improvements in cognitive function, including learning ability, delayed recall, visual recognition, and study that included 30 older adults. So again, these are all benefits, but here, it's a good thing to see uh, that they mentioned the movie and we're showing you clips and occasionally we're throwing jokes on the side. These are ways to incorporate humor into your work even if you don't feel you're funny, uh, even if other people don't feel you're funny, even if you feel you're funny and nobody else feels you're funny. Um, you can incorporate these things into your, um, into your practice, into your work life, into your life with your colleagues. By, by just bringing in things. Oh, I saw something funny. But again, we'll, we'll address where we're gonna find stuff, how we're gonna do it in, in just a couple of moments. Um, how do you encourage your humor in ourselves and those we work with? Learn what makes you and others laugh. That's one of the first, if, if you, even if you don't have much of a sense of humor, there's probably things you find funny. Um, I don't know, I, I can only think of one or two people um, that, uh, don't find anything funny or not funny themselves. Usually, we all know one or two, they're usually related to us by marriage. Um, understand your audience. Know the rules and boundaries. We're gonna talk more about that. Look for the joys in life and see how people respond to them. If they, if they get a mirthful laugh or just a happy smile, adapt other people's materials. You're not, you're not going on the road. You're not going on stage. If somebody says something funny, you can use it. Or even better, if somebody says something funny, figure out how to change it a little, make it your own for the situation at hand. Um, look to place people at ease. That's what we wanna do. So think about what you're saying. If it's gonna upset someone or make them more un uh, un uneasy, then why are we doing it? We can do that if you're doing stand-up. You can do that if you're at home. But at work, why would we want to make people feel uneasy? Not sure why you'd want to do it at home either. Uh, write down funny moments at work. Start collecting things that are funny. And then you'll see the, the, there's a pattern and you'll find the funniest things. Laugh at yourself. It's a good thing to be able to laugh at yourself. If you do something um, embarrassing, you can be embarrassed and feel terrible or you can get everyone to laugh along with you. Um, and, and you may find that that's a better way than the way you may have responded previously. Uh, keep track of laughter quotes, start a joke jar, try laughter med meditation. Uh, and you'd have to look that up because somebody did it with me. They did laughter yoga, actually. I didn't enjoy that very much. They laughed in my face a lot. I found it uh, off-putting, uh, but some people seem to like these sorts of things. Try smiling more. There's a study that found when they asked people to smile throughout the day, even though they didn't feel like it. it, it activated the parts of their brain. Like normally you feel good, you smile, you feel good, you smile. 
you've been doing that since you're a baby. When you smile, your brain says, oh, we must be feeling good. It's been shown to improve how we're doing. Other ways to expand your sense of humor, observe young people to learn how to find the light and amusement in the most ordinary of, uh, of things. Try and see it from their perspective. Increase your exposure to comedies, comics, sitcoms, joke books. The more funny stuff you see, the more you start to understand it and incorporate it. Talk with funny friends. If you have any funny friends, you may be the funny friend. Now you got no one to talk to. However, you're already doing the funny stuff. Take a five to 10 minute humor break each day. Read, write, listen to something funny. If you hear a joke you really like, write it down or even better, tell it to some people. That helps you remember it. It becomes incorporated into your repertoire. How to expand your sense of humor some more? Remind yourself to have fun. Um, part of the issue, sometimes we get very serious. You, you're you're going to do a, an interview. Uh, you're going to do a, a meeting with someone. Uh, and what happens is now you get very serious and all your funniness sort of gets suppressed by this seriousness. And that's okay. Some, some situations demand to be serious. But sometimes you're more serious than you may have wished you were. A lot of times we look back and say, oh, if only I'd said this. One way to do that is to remind yourself throughout, I can have fun. I need to relax, do some deep breathing and try and say, uh, if I've decided I can be funny here and I'm not being so funny and I want to be funny, I may need to remind myself consciously, it's okay. Take a deep breath. What would you want to say during this particular moment? Spend time with those who help you see the bright side of things. Avoid negative people. It's one thing when they're negative and funny, which we talked about earlier, but overall, negative people tend to bring down the, the humor in the room, bring down the energy in the room. We've all felt that. Uh, avoid conversations, news, entertainment that frightens, upsets, or makes you feel sad whenever possible. Uh, and that's a hard thing to do during COVID, but I know people, and I might be guilty of a little of that, who watch a little bit too much news. Now you have, you know, with cable and the computer, you can see news 24 seven. Sometimes we get a little too deep into it and we need to remind ourselves: just lighten up, just, just calm down, just stop going after that. Don't tell anyone else to calm down. They won't like it, uh, but we can tell ourselves to calm down. Tools you can use for yourself. My, that came out smaller. Um, the comedy commute. So I'll read these. You'll be able to visit it online. Listen to comedy or humorous recordings or podcasts on your commute rather than the news. Get some funny stuff going into your day. Get that humor going in the morning. You may need it on the way home from work when you're stressed out and it's been a long day. Uh, some people put on music. That's another helpful tool, tool we covered in, in self-care. But uh, humor is a nice way to go. But whatever you're going to go, the news may not be the most helpful thing for you when you've either had a stressed out day or you want to get going with a good, positive, funny kind of day. I want to incorporate humor today. And then I put on the news and I hear about the latest COVID counts. And I hear that my state might have to lock down again. These are not conducive to the day. Those are things I can listen to uh, after I get into the groove that I want to get into. Three funny things. Each day, write down three things that happened that you found funny, amusing, or humorous. Uh, one of the researchers at this agency found that people who daily wrote down three funny things that happened for only one week increased their overall happiness, uh, self-reported, and decreased depressive symptoms for up to six months. That's pretty staggering. And that was, uh, that's part of the, I think that was part of the AMA, uh, an AMA group. Um, play the what I could have said game. So we just talked about this um, uh, on the previous slide. Funny things occur to you after the fact. Uh, do that. Say to yourself, oh, I, I should have said this. I could have said that. Actively do it. What should I have said? What did I say? Even though the moments passed. Because as we talked about much earlier, your brain is making those connections. If it gets an idea of what you wish you'd said, under that kind of circumstance, it starts to process faster and faster. And what happens is uh, playing the coulda, woulda, shoulda 
what I could have said game now starts to lead to um, thinking of those things more in the moment and getting them out when they'll still be funny or at least less inappropriate. Uh, a few things to keep in mind. Humor is subjective. It is influenced by age, gender, education, culture, spirituality, life status, etc., and society and the times we live. Things that were funny may not be anymore. Things that weren't amusing might be considerably uh, considered comedy today. So try searching. Uh, if you want to see how this plays out negatively, try searching the funniest video ever and see just how subjective that is. Wow, I got to tell you, the amount of violent, nasty, homophobic, some people's funniest videos could be used in for videos for what not to do in cultural competency, microaggression, domestic violence, intolerance. Um, it was, it's incredible when you try and find some, some humorous videos, how difficult that's going to be for you if you just search broad terms. You have to try and do it based on TV shows you might know are funny, based on ideas, based on comedians. And this doesn't take into account what most consider inappropriate humor. We want to use humor to lift others up. Are we going to be funny to be funny to not to be funny? Remember, we're at work. We should always have good reasons for what we say and do at work. We should be able to explain why we did it. It's not to bring people down. Sarcasm, even if we find a, a use for it at work, it's not a license to belittle somebody. Bad humor is not acceptable excuse for bad behavior. So don't say, oh, that was a bad joke. If it's racist, sexist, ageist, discriminatory, we shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Even if somebody laughs at it, it's not appropriate. Nor is inappropriate humor acceptable. It must be gauged based on who am I, who is my, the person I'm talking to? Who is my audience? What's the situation? So I have... Uh, why couldn't they play cards on Noah's Ark? Because he stood on the deck. All joke, maybe you don't find it funny anymore, but you can tell it in most circumstances. I had examples for the orange and for the red. And after I did them at our annual conference, I was told, please don't do that. I can't, but can you believe how many regulatory bodies there are out there watching everything we say and do? So I'm not going to give you examples. You know what, something came to your mind right now. Um, uh, so just um, think about it. If, if, you're not, if you're not sure you should say it, probably shouldn't. People view what you're saying through their personal experience, their education, their cultural lens, as they do everything else. There can be faux pas. You will make mistakes. I've made mistakes. Um, I remember when I told my daughter that I took this job six years ago, and I said, I'm going to be teaching cultural competency. And she goes, that, that clearly proves that those who can't do teach. So we're going to make mistakes. Some things will land like a thud. Maybe. Or appreciate it. You've seen plenty of that during this webinar. Even on this slide. Look at the joke. A sandwich walks into a bar. The barman says, sorry, we don't serve food in here. Right now, 10% of the people on this webinar are thinking, that's not funny. I've been to bars where they don't serve food. So things don't always work out. Move on. But use their facial expressions, their body language, their tone of voice to inform your behavior and your response. You may need to stop before you finish the joke. You may need to clarify because they misheard. Worse, they may not have misheard. And if they're upset, you need to do more than clarify. You need to apologize. If there are any questions about that, um, I'll just recommend again, we teach it we, in other trainings, right? We talk about facial expression, body language, tone of voice. We shouldn't just be watching it to gauge what, how they're acting to us, how they're receiving us, but how they're appreciating our humor, because we can set things off in a very negative direction if we don't handle it well. 
other uh, strategies and exercises, again, for you to start practicing. We've given you a lot of tools. We've given you ideas, showed you a couple of clips. At the end of each day, write down the three funniest things you experienced that day. Describe the feelings during the experience. Make a connection between what went on and how you remembered feeling. As each day progresses, keep track of all the funny things that happened. Briefly jot down each one so you can get a total at the end of the day. And applying humor. Notice humorous things that happen during a typical day and add new humorous activities. Think about how it could have been funnier. Think about something or something that was said that was funny and now say to yourself, how could I have made that more funny? And the opportunity may arise again. If it came up before, there's a good chance it's something that will come up again at work, will come up again with your friends, your family. Hey, folks. So uh, I know folks were just saying that uh, they could not hear Larry or they couldn't, his video froze. And it looks like we just lost him. Um, I imagine that is due to weather related conditions. Um, we've got some wind conditions happening. Uh, let's give him a second to try and come back on. He was sharing his slides. So hopefully he'll be able to pop back on. And I will try to. I'll try to get his slides back up. In the meantime, if anybody has questions, feel free to use the chat box and type in your questions because I've been keeping track. Um, and thank you to the person who put in the link for the, um, the yoga video. So maybe if that person wants to put that link in again and move it closer to the, the bottom of the chat, that might be helpful for folks. So let's go ahead and give Larry a minute to try and get back on screen. And I do apologize and I appreciate your patience. Like I said, today's probably not the best, not the best uh, day for weather related challenges. Hi. Oh, there he is. Yes, All right. You know, since I'm wired into the ethernet, I'm not sure what happened. Yeah, we lost you for a second, but that's all right. You're back. Yes, I'm back and let me get my, uh, sorry about that. That has not happened once since I've been ethernet wired. I don't know what went on there, but can you please make me uh, able to share my screen again, please? Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, I think Eileen may have to do I, that. I was gonna say, I think she, somebody just did something while I was trying to. Let's see. Let me see. Yep, you're off that. Oh, cool, okay. Thank you very much, yes, there I am. Um, okay. Uh, oh, wait, 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 stop share. Let me make sure I did everything I need to do. Share screen. No, I didn't see. I would have had not the sound that time. Advanced. Okay. Sorry about that. That is a, uh, uh, okay. Slideshow from current slide and presenter view. Okay. Hopefully we're good. And hopefully that will be the worst technology issue we have today. Um, and hopefully that's the worst thing in your experience today. Not sure if that will be the case, but we'll find out. Um, okay, so we talked about looking up funny things and applying them. Uh, collecting, recall one of the funniest things. You know, it doesn't only have to be what you're doing that day. Collect funny things from your past. Start writing the funniest things you can remember. Resolving stress with humor. Think about a stressful experience from your day, write about how it was or could have been resolved in a funny and humorous way. Um, somebody is raising their hand, but I don't think we can um, uh, hear them. So you might, you, you guys should uh, chat. If you wanna say something, you should put it in the chat and Daniela will uh, definitely um, get back to us. Uh, let me know what's going on. So resolving stress with humor, think about a stressful experience from your day like losing your internet in the middle of your webinar going out across the country. Um, write about how it was or could have been resolved in a funny and humorous way. I apologize. I could not find any funny way to re-sign into the internet. Uh, the best I could do was as quickly as I possibly could. So we're going to watch one more video. 
We're almost done. Please don't disappear after the video. I want to take questions, go over some things that were in the chat. I want to fi finish up with a couple of thoughts, but let's watch one more video about going back to our work day. <laughs> stuff last some last thoughts to keep in mind laughter is the most inexpensive and most effective wonder drug laughter is a universal medicine a good laugh heals a lot of hurts i have not seen anyone dying of laughter but i know millions who are dying because they are not laughing so with those final thoughts if you have any thoughts any comments of course if you have any questions please throw them into the chat now Anything you want us to know, now's your time to put it in writing. You'll have another time when you get your evaluation. Uh, but, but now's the time to let us know uh, if, uh, if there's any helpful thoughts, if there's any questions you have. It will be posted. I know we cover a lot of information in our webinars. As I said, Niapris takes it very seriously. So we will post the PowerPoint. We will post the recording of this. And we will post um, the chat. Uh, now there'll be two chats, I guess, if, uh, because we, uh, it got cut off. So, um, uh, so if anyone has any thoughts, any questions, anything they want to say before they, they leave while you're thinking, I just want to uh, say to everybody, if you have any questions, thoughts, uh, need training from us, you can, you can email me. Uh, or uh, I should have had Ruth, our director of our department, for, for people in other areas. But uh, you can email me. My email is on the, ad, uh, on the screen. Uh, everyone, please, while you're thinking of what you want to say, stay safe, stay well, and may you, your loved ones, and your agency families have safe, happy, and healthy holidays in a new year. Uh, really can't stress that enough. We're not out of the woods. We finally see some light ahead. Niapras has been doing a lot of stuff to keep us um, in the know and, and safe during, during uh, the COVID crisis with all our webinars and we've continued to do all our training online, but, but really want to stress there's still a lot going on out there. Stay safe, stay well. We got some time uh, before everything's going to be okay. But if anyone has any uh, thoughts, any uh, questions, I'm not seeing any in my chat, but I'm also not seeing my chat, so. Yeah, um. Larry, there was one question, actually, so somebody posted um, a link to the yoga video, the laughter yoga video, so if they wanna, that was way early, so if you wanna put that in again, um, that might be helpful for folks. Um, the other question that came in was, could you explain what a joke jar is? <laughs> oh, so a joke jar is, um, you can use it one of two ways. You can either use it to put a joke in when you hear one, think of one, you write it down. It's just a way to collect the joke. Some people use it to force themselves to start thinking funnier. They require themselves, like some people have their swear jars where you throw money into the jar whenever you curse, which can get very expensive for some of us. So uh, we'll have a joke jar. We'll throw in a joke. Uh, every day we'll say I have to throw in at least one joke a day so that means I wanted to go to bed now I got to go back on the computer and search out joke of the day funny joke because I didn't get to to do that prior to uh, other people just say you know throughout the day funny things always come up 
I never remember them. Now I'm writing them down, throwing them in the jar. It could be a virtual jar on your desktop. It could be a real jar on your desktop. Awesome. Thank you. Um, a question just came in about what kind of humor would you suggest using with um, folks that you're working with who may be dying? So that's a really good and difficult question. Um, when we were researching this, some of the things I saw were um, people had groups, uh, like, you know, you'd have like a, um, a group of people who are going through a similar illness or maybe with the family. It, it depends on the individual. It depends on the circumstances. Um, it's, it's usually not for when things are really bad, bad. It's more for people who are terminally ill and they are, they are in a path and they start to see it and they want to start dealing with it with their family. Humor will come up and then they can talk about things like, well, now I, or you can talk up, now you won't have to deal with my bad jokes anymore. Now you won't have to listen to, it really depends on the, the circumstance, how the people are feeling, um, how the, otherwise it may be somebody put in more like a, celebra a celebration of life, sharing old family stories that were funny. It, it really depends on the circumstance and, uh, and it's a tricky one. Uh, because it's not only for the person you're dealing with, unless you happen to be alone with them in the room, but uh, you have to remember they may really appreciate the joke. They may be your funny uncle who always appreciates a joke, but the family might not be as open to it. So it's, it's tough. Okay, thank you. Um, so lots of folks saying thank you to you, Larry, and lots of folks saying this was a, quite a timely webinar. So because folks are mentioning that this was a timely webinar, I want to mention that the other webinar that we recorded um, this month was around peer services and how our peers can offer um, other folks hope around the holiday season. So that webinar was also recorded, and you can watch that recording um, through the NIAPERS website at www.niapers.org. Um, also wanna give a shameless plug for our January webinars, if I could do that real quick. <laughs> so we have two great folks lined up for January. Um, the first is our very own Robert Statham, and he's gonna uh, present on understanding loneliness and social isolation and how that impacts people and society. Um, and that webinar is on January 12th at noon, and that's an hour long. And then we also have Peggy Swarbrick coming back. She's a good friend of Niapper's, and she's going to talk to us about winter wellness planning. Um, and that webinar will take place on January 8th, also at 12 noon. Um, so just wanted to give that uh, a mention as well. It doesn't look like there are any other questions coming in the chat box that I can see. So we could give it a minute or we could give folks a few minutes left to their, their lunch hour possibly. <laughs> yeah, so somebody brought up Patch Adams. Yeah, there's a lot of resources out there of films and life stories and books about people who have used these things to incorporate these things into difficult circumstances, health related circumstances. So. All, all good things to know. For the CEs, you will receive an evaluation link. Uh, everyone who's registered and attended will get the evaluation link. Uh, can you ever be counterproductive? Well, definitely, uh, we, we covered a lot of instances. If it's inappropriate, if you're not sensitive to the, how the people's reacting, some people, they're in a serious way, we may misinterpret, you start to use humor. Shut it down. And, and apologize. Uh, apologies are, are tough for some people, especially when they don't think they did anything wrong. So um, it's important to, to be ready to watch people's reactions and react very quickly. Don't keep going because you want to finish the joke. So. Also, there was a question in the chat box about how do you uh, know in advance which webinars um, we're offering CEs for. So if you are on the NIAPRS e-news list, uh, we always send out the announcements about webinars um, through the e-news and um, Harvey always puts in that e-news which, um, which professions we work for or work with to provide CEs. And for most webinars, they are social work, LMHC, LMSW, LCSW, CPRP, and um, we're at 
hoping to provide peer CEs for all of our webinars starting in January. We're working really hard to get that done. So a, a lot of people are asking how they get on the list. So I want to point out two things. Daniela Tayahuda contact, but you can go to niapras.org, our website, nyaprs.org, and I believe we always have on the, on the front page upcoming webinars. Am I correct about that? You are, and you can also go to the website and sign up for the e-news that way too. Um, there is a link that says sign up for e-news, so all you have to do is put your email address in and you'll be connected with us that way. And you cannot get CEs for watching recordings. That's correct. So, uh, somebody asked that, so, uh, so definitely you'll have to tune in, but uh, we've been doing a lot of webinars. We, uh, they want to make sure when we're home, we're still working. So we're out, we're doing them. So everybody be well. Thank you guys. All right. Have a great holiday. Thanks so much, everyone. And thank you so much, Larry. You're the best. Thank you, Daniela. Always a pleasure working together.